This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, and I'm here with Reverend Bill Marcioni, and we're going to talk about something really great this week. You wanted to talk about your sticking points. Yeah, with practical prayer. Yeah, so tell me about what they were or are. Okay, so making the transition from traditional prayer to practical prayer uh, was the hardest thing, absolutely the most difficult thing to do. Not that I didn't want to do it. But intellectually, it was hard for me to make the transition. And so these were, this is the the hardest thing, the first thing I'll mention. And then the second thing I'm still working on. Okay, so the hardest thing was knowing who I'm talking to. Hmm. Because traditionally, you know, you, you'll get in a position, there's you in the presence of this big God, whether he's close or far away, wherever God is, you are talking to that God. Right. Some, some exterior deity. Yeah. 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 And depending on, you know, what you did prior to the prayer determines whether, you know, that God is going to hear you or not, you know, and so that's another, (laughs) that's another subject. But assuming that you get everything in order and you're all, you know, everything is right and blah, blah, you've done all your forgiveness stuff. You're talking to this external God. That was hard for me. So, but I'm cool with it now. Because because a new thought God is within. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and once I got that, you know, I thought, okay, this is this is good. And you understand the reason for the, the, the difference in approach? I can answer that this way. The scripture says that our bodies are the temple of the living God. And there are several scriptures that talk about the oneness of God. And my favorite chapter all of my whole life has been John chapter 17. is where Jesus is praying to God. And it's typically called the high priestly prayer. But it's so clear the way Jesus explains our oneness with God. And so I kept going back to that. And, and thought, if I can get into the Christ mind, if I could get into the mind that Jesus had at the time of that prayer, I'll get it. And when I said that, like, it was instant. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, at the same time, that is incredibly empowering and really daunting. Because to claim that divinity is within us, to claim that uh, authority and dominion over creating our life is a huge bit of responsibility. It's very empowering, and it is also, you know, with <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility. Which sage said that? I think it was Spider Man's uncle. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody, somebody <laughs> really wise said it. But here's the thing: it is daunting, and it's big. But take it a little, like one step at a time. The first step is, for me, was to understand and accept that that is true. God is within me. We're one. Okay, now where do I go from here? And I, you know, I don't didn't try to take the whole God power as my power and, you know, everything that is God I am. I didn't try to take the whole thing at one time. Just, okay, you're in there now. 
we're one, so now what's next? You know, it, you're, mm-hmm. you're so right that it's big. But if you if you look at it that way, it'll be too scary, I right. think, or, or too intimidating. Did you find it helpful to start with um, the inconsequential, insignificant training wheel prayers? Like, what are they? Yeah, it's ones where you you pray to find money on the sidewalk, oh, or you, okay. you for you know easy parking spaces, or the subway showing up when you get to the platform. Uh, I think I might have started with bigger ones, okay. probably because by the time I I met the author of this book, Reverend Bill Marcioni, <laughs> you'd been doing it for a while. I, well, no, I had big stuff. You know, I had right. big stuff that I wanted to work with, so the inconsequential stuff, well, that just had to happen. You know, I'm going to find a quarter or the parking space is going to be there, probably because I was always thought that it would anyway. Didn't right. know what I was doing. But I immediately plugged into some big stuff. Yeah, and as as long as we're willing to do that, then the the answer is yes. I mean, it, it's it's the, the authority and the accountability going hand in hand. Uh, which is what makes it seem big. The <laughs> it's not big in the grand universal scheme of things. Nothing that we're doing is actually big. It might it seems big for us. It's not big for an infinite power that creates galaxies. Yeah, yeah. So the 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 point for us is to accept and acknowledge and own that power that we have, the 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 authority and the dominion that we've got that we're using anyway. And acknowledge that we can use it consciously and intentionally uh, and turn it to being used for good, whatever it is that we call good. Okay, so something you just said, you talked about the infinite power of God to create galaxies and, you know, and we can say all of those omnis, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, and all of those great church words. The, the, The big making stuff. Yeah, the big, I like that, the big making stuff. Um, But then, you know, I'm slow about things like, okay, stop right there. That's that's challenging us to see or say, what do I really think about God? Because if this God is one within me and I'm one with this God and we're, you know, we're one wrapped up, tied up and all that business, then I need to know what my perception of God really is. And when you said that there's nothing big, you know, God is big, the stuff that we think is big is really small. It's really coming to terms with what, how I perceive God. You know, yeah. I, know I know God can get me a parking space. That's cool. <laughs> I don't really mind the walk. So if I don't get a parking space, I'm still cool. But what I did want, which was big to me, you know, a whole list of things, I had to say okay this god is is this god big enough to handle this and then i you know i had to laugh at myself of course yeah you know but that's i guess isn't that how you overcome the doubt and the questions is to really focus on your perception or what you really believe about god i think that we have an inherent difficulty with understanding infinity my concept of the universe has some sort of an edge. When I think about it, it gets really, really, really big, but there's something, and then outside of that, there's not something. And for my entire life, because I grew up loving science and being interested in the, the nature of the cosmos, and since I was little, I have been unable to completely get my head around infinity. Like the universe goes out to infinity. Now, I understand that it does, and I can talk about it does, and I've got the the theoretical construct, but I don't have the mental model of what that really means. That's as big as I can possibly imagine, and then bigger than that. And when I get to the end of it, it's not the end of it because it keeps on going. And maybe it loops back on itself, and maybe there's something going on that uh, we, we haven't figured out yet. But... The concept of the infinite is really big. And that's important because oneness is everything inside of that infinite. That infinite power that is God 
is part of this infinity. It's and we're part of it too. It's all part of that same one infinite creative presence. Now, I'm not the biggest element in it. I just look at myself on a physical scale as you know, one person walking around on one planet and one solar system and one galaxy and there's billions of galaxies. Just on that scale, there's a difference between me and the infinite. But because it's all one, I'm part of it. I am an active participant in that creative process. So however big God is, it's an inside job. I like that. Yeah, it's an inside job. It's an inside job. Yeah. But once you pass that, the you you get a good concept of a of the bigness of God, which is yeah. a small word, but once you get that, then a lot of almost everything else flows. Yes. That initial concept of the infinite creative power and our oneness with it is what enables everything else. Those are the first two steps of the practical prayer. The, the first step in a practical prayer is to identify that infinite power and whatever aspect of it that was going to be applying to our particular prayer. And the second part is to identify our oneness with it. Because in that way we are aligning ourselves with that infinite creative power and letting it create something new, which it's doing all the time anyway, but to do it in accordance with what is going to feel good and support us and our environment and our families and our uh, our life in this next period of time. So here's a challenge for you. <laughs> you know, there's two steps, right, between the realization and the gratitude step. Mm -hmm. So it, there probably needs to be a step between the recognition and the unity or the oneness step. Because now I'm th I'm speaking purely from a traditional point of view. Okay. okay. I'm a traditional mindset. I am perfectly okay making this more complicated. We'll do an <laughs> addendum to the that. book. We can add another class. So, and I, I'm all right with you know it being the core six steps or eight or twelve or however many it takes because yeah. the important part is that it works. So, I have an idea, but you tell me what your idea for that that okay, second. Okay, so don't blame me for is. adding another step because this is getting big, mm -hmm. <laughs> but. The step is to, from a, again, from a traditional mindset, you would say, well, why? I, I don't, I'm not worthy to be one with this holy, perfect, excellent God. And so I would have to work out how that would be possible. Why would God, you know, one of the things I used to hear in church is, God can't be in the presence of sin or evil. And what's the other one? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. So once you're, you're always made conscious of your imperfection, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so you already know that you're already a mess to begin with. <laughs> and, you know, like you clean yourself up good enough to for public appearances and go to work. But beyond all that, you know you're just all screwed up. So to be, to think that you could be one with this magnificent, powerful, beautiful, excellent, perfect God is like, that can't be. Hmm. So there's and an assumption. Y yeah. There's a, and an assumption with a hidden belief. Real deep. You know, and, right. and so then you get into forgiving yourself and, you know, God is forgiving. And I struggled with that God is forgiving part because I figured, you know, he doesn't have to be forgiving. He already knew all this, you know, but then, <laughs> <laughs> but then to say he's not forgiving is, is uh, presumptuous of me. There's a whole bunch of stuff in that that you got to work through, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's all based on prior beliefs. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we will talk about assumptions and second-rate work. Okay. You can put practical prayer to work in your life. And Reverend Bill Marcioni can help. 
He is offering an online class that teaches you to create your own practical prayer in five weekly one-hour sessions. The final hour brings your practical prayer together, anchored in live original music by a notable New Thought musician. Practical prayer is based on the most effective prayers found in religions and spiritual practices all over the world. Use it to deepen ever more fully into the truth of your spiritual nature. It's the core of a transformational spiritual practice that's simple, even if it's not always easy. Reverend Bill is also available for private spiritual counseling prayer sessions. Together, you'll lean into the challenges you've experienced in life and explore the transformation that's possible through practical prayer. He'll uncover old, hidden beliefs and uproot them to make way for the life of your dreams. Everything you need to know is on the website at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence and here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. And we're going to talk about assumptions. And you said something about second-rate work. Yep, second-rate work. So unpack all that. You're talking about the need for an additional step in the practical prayer. Because we start out by identifying that infinite, one creative power and presence, that the divine, God the Almighty, uh, that which has brought everything into existence. And the second step is to identify that we are part of that oneness, that all of that infinite creative power is available to and through and in and as us. And you said that there needs to be a step because we know we're not worthy. And that's the assumption. The assumption is that we're not worthy. You're talking about sin and that, you know, God is not comfortable in the presence of sin and i would say that that's true but it's not because god can't be in the room with it god's everywhere it's because god doesn't see it as a sin we see it as a sin there's stuff that was perfectly okay written down in the bible this is how you treat your slaves it's not okay anymore it probably wasn't okay then but it still made it into the book and the judgment about whether that's good or not whether that's acceptable whether the Me Too movement should happen or not, that's not God's. That's up to us. We get to choose what's going to be okay, what's sin and what's not sin. So God's not present in sin because God doesn't see sin. And you're talking about forgiveness. God doesn't forgive you because it's already forgiven. I've mentioned before that when we do something, God's okay with it. God loves you. You do something that the world considers to be fabulous. You become Mother Teresa. God loves you. You do something horrible, you become Adolf Hitler. God loves you. That's because that's what God does. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. Everything in the world, everything that exists, is God's creation, is God sharing itself as its creation. And we can even logic that out. Because if I'm in a relationship with someone, and I can do something that that person considers to be a sin, or bad, or unacceptable, or whatever... I can piss them off. I can get them angry. I can I can then control their behavior. I can do this and get that reaction or do something different and get a different reaction. And if I'm doing that, then I'm in control of the relationship. And if I can do something that's going to anger God, that God's going to have to stop doing something and go to forgiveness, if I'm going to do something that's going to change God, that is the height of arrogance. I'm in control of that relationship. And I, I don't know what kind of God, what kind of infinite power is going to be controlled by me having a hissy fit. So it's the assumption that anything that we're going to do is going to change God. We are not. God is infinite. That's back to the infinite and our oneness with the infinite. There is one infinite creative power that has created everything, and it's done that in perfection. God doesn't do any second-rate work. There's not like the good galaxies and then the backwater galaxies. There's not the nice part of God's creation and then the reject part of God's creation. Everything that exists, everything, 
is a divine and perfect expression of God's love, sometimes showing up in ways that are really obvious to people like you and me and the folks who are listening, and sometimes in ways that are really mysterious. Sometimes the biggest challenges, the biggest difficulties, the biggest things that come along that are difficult for us are the challenges that we surmount, the obstacles that we overcome to bring more goodness into our world. You know, we see it as a problem, but by surmounting the problem, we have created something new and wonderful that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have the challenge or the problem to begin with. So God doesn't do any second-rate work, ever, which means that everything is the class A top of the list. Everything is God's gold star. That includes you. That includes me. That includes everything, everyone, everywhere. And we got to own it. Now, if I have to do an extra step in the middle of the prayer to remind myself that I'm not unworthy, that I am not second-rate material, that I'm not on the B list, that I'm not out of favor with the infinite, I can do that. In fact, a lot of times that's what I'm doing in the prayer. I get myself clear enough with that infinite creative power that created everything, and then I own it. And when you see people who have been doing practical prayer or spiritual mind treatment for a while, you might notice that depending on what the prayer is, they get hung up in one of the steps and it goes on for a while and a while and a while and a while. And that's because we are convincing ourselves of whatever is sticking right now. Now, once we do the affirmation, there's actually a, a, a pair of steps if we don't believe it. If that little voice says, I don't, I don't believe it, we have an actual process we can go through to remind ourselves that whatever doubt we have has no power and that divine creative power that is God has the ability to do anything and then take another run at the affirmation to bring that into existence or experience. If you find yourself going from the recognition step where you're talking about the infinite power and presence of God and you have doubt when you try and get into I am one with that, then do the refutation and reaffirmation steps there. Because if you are going into a prayer thinking that you're less than, thinking that you're not going to get what it is that you're asking for, taking God's power away from yourself and putting it somewhere else because you're not worthy of it, it doesn't matter what your affirmation is. You are going to get the results of what you believe, which is that you don't deserve it, instead of the result of what it is that you're claiming. Hmm. I get it. I, I, I remember something you said and I, I can't remember whether it was in a class or wherever. We're talking about Jesus and practical prayer. And you said something that caused a light bulb to go off. You said Jesus didn't have to do step one and two. He could just get right into the, go right straight to the affirmation because he was living the whole thing. He was living one and two. And when, I, when you said that, I thought, wow. You know, that takes away a lot of the the work. You can almost do it one time. Like you, you, you learn how to live in the awareness of the the greatness and recognition of of who God is. You that just becomes a part of your thinking, and then if the the unity with that, the personal unity with that. You work on that. You you live that. I can see how it becomes kind of automatic. You know, it's it's like music. It's like a flow, and then you go right into the um, the affirmation. Yeah, the affirmation, the realization step. Yeah. So, yeah, living in that, being completely immersed in that, and believing that continuously. Which, by the way, I'm not. I'm a lot closer to it than I was in the past and I dance in and out of it but that's why I do the first two steps in all of the times when I'm doing a prayer when whatever the prayer request isn't obvious every once in a while somebody comes along and they ask me to pray for something and it's just obvious that that's about to happen so I just do the affirmation and let it go because there's zero doubt whatsoever in my mind and I see the divinity of whatever it is that they're asking for and I just say this is unfolding in perfection so it is yeah, I after I made sense of it. Now it ha, I don't maybe it hasn't been sufficiently challenged in me yet, but 
living in it, the idea of that, once I unraveled it, I said, this is good. And I think it has to do with... <laughs> <laughs> it has to do with the way I was raised. You know, I had this great father. So anything that, you know, just whatever I wanted in the world was going to happen, he would make it happen. So if you tell me I got something, hey, thanks. I got it and I'm gone. But the, the part that still gives me a little pause is the affirmation part or the realization part, like making the transition into the realization I'm still kind of working with that. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not sure what the pro, what the issue is in there. You mean in that transition from claiming your oneness with the infinite to now claiming this mundane thing that you're looking for in your life? Yeah. And, and I mean, it, it could be a one-liner that you're going to give me that's going to make a difference. And, you know, I'm waiting for that. Uh, let's see. Do I have a one-liner? Nah. <laughs> Instead, you got it. You just don't know it till you do it. What I'm going to suggest is that we start with your favorite step of the prayer, which is the purpose. And in the purpose, we identify what it is that we want to do, where it is that we're, we're, we're headed with this prayer. And we don't go immediately into an affirmation because what we want to do is bring a really powerful belief, a really powerful presence into that new claim or affirmation or realization or belief statement. And so we go through the first two steps. The first two steps are preparing us to be able to say that realization step with the power and authority of the infinite creative power that creates everything instead of from our smallness. So instead of thinking that you're making a transition into the realization step, think of the first two steps as preparing you to get to the point where you're ready to say that in a way that's powerful and believable to you. When I was in elementary school, we used to, on the playground, we would pick sides. So we're putting the team together. And we're kind of, everybody's milling around and figuring out who's going to be doing the picking and all the rest of that. And then we pick sides. Well, this is a process where we're sitting here in the middle of our life. And we are actually on God's team. But we forget. We think that we're playing out here by ourselves or it's just the family group or the company that I'm working with or whatever it happens to be. What we're doing is reminding ourselves that when we're picking sides, we're on God's team and God's on our team. God is our team captain and we are completely part of the team on board and everything that God's team can accomplish can be accomplished for me. And it's a reminder that that process is available, that that power is available because we don't want to be doing our affirmation from our small self, from our ego self, where we're looking up and claiming something good that we don't really believe in because that's hope, that's wishful thinking, that's a get-rich-quick scheme. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please make this happen for me. And it's not some capricious power out there that's going to evaluate whether or not it's our turn for something good. It's about letting go of our disbelief understanding that that infinite creative power that if it wanted to could create another galaxy can create this new experience for me now as me through me for me whatever it is that up until a moment ago we might have called a miracle and in fact until it happens we could think of as a miracle but afterwards we can look back and say well that was really unlikely but i understand how it happened does it help in your mind if you think of the first two steps as preparing you to be able to say a believable affirmation or realization. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm perfectly okay adding another step if we need to. Well, don't do it because of me, right? I just, I wanted you to... <laughs> I'm sorry. If there's an infinite power and it's all one, then this is God speaking. So, and okay. if God through Carol L. Lawrence says we need another step, then we do. It's not, well, and by the way, it's not because of you. It's good. It would be because it's true. Okay. I'm still working on whether or not it's true. And and I'm not sure exactly that it's that it really is necessary as another step as much as it is part of understanding. See, that's the teacher in me. I want to make sure you got every single thing, you understand every single thing in order to go to the next step. And when you when you talk about the oneness with God, when you talk about God and then the oneness with God, that almost becomes one thing by itself. You know, it, it's it's like recognizing that this is what it is, okay? This is God, this is me. 
People reject the term, I am God. I don't. I don't because that's what you're saying. Yeah. You know, so, all right, let's go. <laughs> and so I'm at the recognition part and I wanted to hear you talk about. But then if I live in this state of consciousness that Jesus was in, then the recognition should be a no-brainer, no biggie for me. That's what I think, although having not lived in the state of consciousness that Jesus did, I can't say for sure. But we can understand, intellectually we understand. It seems, you know, it seems to make sense, yeah. It, it makes perfect sense to me. So and I'm, I'm like not about making it difficult. If I, once I get it, I got it, let's move. Okay. You know. And what I'm going to suggest is that, that built into the process is the way to address what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself doing a prayer for something that you consider to be big, you know, to get a new building or, you know, a fabulous relationship or a ton of money or whatever it happens to be, and you're not able to adequately make that transition from this infinite God power to this divine power that's me, that's able to channel all of that goodness that's in the universe so that I can bring this big thing into existence. If that's where your doubt's coming up, then that's the invitation for another prayer. And the prayer in that case, instead of for the big thing, is for a deeper awareness of your oneness with the infinite. So how do I say the big thing? How do I, because I, let's say I, I'm in the prayer and I'm really okay with the oneness and all of that, then what is the transition statement? You know, how do I articulate that? My notion is that if you are actually in alignment with your oneness, with the, the infinite creative power that can create anything, the floodgates are open. You can claim anything from that position of power and authority. It doesn't matter how little or big it is. You can do that. What I'm suggesting is that if you have a problem transitioning from that claim of your divinity into the claim of this thing that you're thinking of as big, then you need to do a different prayer. You need to not be praying for the big thing. You need to be praying instead for your deeper awareness of your divinity. And once you've got your clarity on that, then you do another prayer or you continue the prayer on whatever the big thing was. Okay, so let's assume that I got the oneness and I'm okay with that. My next words are, I claim such and such or I see if the first step is, and we'll, we'll make this be for a loving relationship. In the first step, I say that God is love. There is nothing but love. And I know this because in the beginning, there was nothing but God. There was God and there was void and darkness. And God said, let there be. And everything that is, is that God presence shared as its creation. Had to be. There's nothing but God. And that act of sharing, of sharing of self, sharing our our substance, our energy, our creativity, our intelligence. That's the ultimate act of love. So everything that exists in the universe is God's love made manifest. And knowing that that love is me as well, and that's the transition from the first step into the second step, I have to be that divine love. There's nothing else that I could possibly be. So all of the love that's available anywhere is expressed as me to whatever degree I can embody it. So the relationship that I'm looking for is that love. The goodness that I'm looking for is that love. Once I get myself to the point where I understand that that infinite is in me, I'm then ready to start talking about the relationship. I know that I am love, and then the transition is, and I open myself to an even deeper loving relationship with a, a person who's like-minded and deep and connected, and whatever else it is that I'm going to be claiming in that. By the time I get to the deep-seated belief that I'm one with the infinite, the transition is almost automatic. That's why we start out with the purpose statement, so I know what I'm going to be praying for. Mm -hmm. And then I can talk about the aspect of God that relates to that. Because if I were praying for money, then I wouldn't do the whole thing about God as love. I would do the whole thing about God as infinite abundance. This is a power that creates galaxies and get myself to the point where there's like an immense availability of resource there. Mm -hmm. And since it's available 
anywhere. It's available everywhere. It's available to me. And now I can get, get myself to the point where that, that infinite abundance is at hand right here and right now. And as soon as I've got the feeling of that infinite abundance, this is God's infinite abundance, and it's available through me, then when I start talking about the rent or my car payment or you know the credit card bills or something like that, that's God talking. I think once we get our belief to the point where we're in alignment with the oneness, we're in alignment with the infinite, the transition is almost automatic into that realization step. And if it feels like a big leap, then we're going to do the prayer to be more aware of the divinity that's within us. I see. I see. You know, this is more than prayer. It's a, it's a consciousness all the t- of all the time. It's just an all-the-time state of mind, it seems. Because when I was... I I felt it specifically this week, and it was like an aha, you know. I was doing some meditation, and I try not to think, but I kept thinking of uh, practical prayer. And so I was going through it in my mind, the steps, and then I was putting things into place. and, And I set it aside, and then I came back to it again and it it started to be like a natural flow of thought mm-hmm. does that make sense yeah it just started to whenever i thought about something it just was a natural flow and then it seemed like for a couple of days whenever i was somewhere it just flowed and i thought is life a practical prayer <laughs> Sometimes when we get into putting together the mission statement or the vision statement of one of our New Thought communities, we'll talk about what this actually is. And what we usually come down to is that New Thought is a teaching, it's a philosophy, it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. And we can start with the teaching, we can understand the philosophy, and what you're talking about is making it a way of life because it's the tendency of our thinking. When we start getting into that divine consciousness, aspiring to the consciousness that Jesus had, the rules change. Our, everything in our experience changes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because when I'm... I did a, a class on the mind of Christ, or the Christ mind, and I learned more than I shared, I think. Because it's a... It's a mindset that it's a lifestyle. It's how I think and perceive the world, you know, and, and everything. And practical prayer just kind of gave it or is giving it a structure because I don't want to imply at all that, I'm, that I've got it. I'm just saying that there are times in the day when I'll recognize this is where you are in the prayer. Like your whole life is becoming a prayer or your life is being structured this way and and it's kind of wonderful you know and if you tell me that's not what it is I don't want to hear it because I <laughs> <laughs> I am really loving this you know I was driving and it was about a 20 minute drive and I had something on my mind which was you know kind of messing around in the the um the affirmation um I don't know why I don't want to say the other word the recognition part. And and I was kind of thinking yeah. about that. And then I automatically started thinking about who God is in this situation. And in a sense, what divine vision or eternal vision or eternal perception would be toward this thing I was thinking. And the big thing got, began to get small. And mm. it seemed like with me, I thought, I can do this. What? I could do this. <laughs> and then then I went straight to being grateful. And the first thing I said was, I am grateful to know this. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful to know how this works. Like, not like it's magic, but maybe, you know, because I like the word magic. I am grateful to know this. And then at the end of the prayer, you know, I just like the one-liner, as so it is, there is so no is. negotiation here. I'm just <laughs> done. so Boom, cool with drop this. The it's, mic. A, it's, it's done. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. All right. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Let's take a quick break and come back and do a prayer for being more aware of the divinity. 
that's available that's within us. Okay. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence and Reverend Bill Marcioni is here going to talk about uh, the awareness of the divinity or moving yeah. into the awareness. We're going to do that prayer that we would do if we try to do a prayer for something we think is big and don't have a comfort level with moving from our claim of our divinity into the realization step of claiming the car or the relationship or the the different experience in our health uh, based on a diagnosis or something like that this if there's something that we're considering to be big and what we're getting is that we're not worthy of making that claim we can wind back to zero and do this prayer instead and this is the prayer of knowing that that the divine is within us and that, that's, that's going to be standalone that's the big thing that we're praying for here so everyone who's listening is invited to close your eyes or go into a soft focus, unless, of course, you're driving a car or operating heavy machinery, in which case, please use your good judgment. <laughs> As we turn our attention away from the, the details in the world around us to the truth within, the truth that underlies everything, the truth that there is that one divine power and presence, that one infinite creative power that creates everything. We call it God. We call it spirit, we call it nature, we call it the Big Bang. Whatever it is that we call it, it is the one from which everything flows. Everything, everyone, everywhere, is that divine presence taking particular form. And we know this because everything came from the one. In the beginning there was darkness and void and God. All there was was God. And then God said, let there be light. And the creative law responded, and there is light. And the light is created by God sharing its energy and its substance and its presence and its power as the light. Everything that exists is that divine God presence expressed in its own specific and particular way. Everything is that divine presence. Everyone, everywhere is that divine presence. And so I am that divine presence too. All of that power, all of the ability to say let there be is available to and through and in and as me as well. I am that divine power and presence, expressing in a way that is unique and specific and especially me. So I know that I am aware of that divine power and presence within me at all times in a more deep and profound and delightful way in every moment. I am that divine power and presence expressing as me. I know that each one is that divine power and presence expressing in a unique and wonderful way. We are each individually and all together that divine creative power and process and all of the good, all of the love, all of the harmony, all of the vitality and health, all of the balance and sweetness and richness and perfection that is available anywhere is available to each of us. It's available at a claim of saying, let there be. And that infinite creative power is ever ready to let it be. So I now claim that each one of us is even more fully aware of that divinity within, of that infinite power and presence that's the truth of what we are, in ways that are rich and wonderful and profound and uplifting for each of us. There's nothing 
that opposes this. There is no power in the universe that opposes that divine power of God. And there is nothing that prevents our awareness of that divine power that's the truth of what we are from being in our awareness. I'm so grateful for this goodness. I'm so grateful for the wonderful way that this is showing up in our lives. I am so grateful for the even deeper awareness of the good, of the love, of the harmony, of the creative power that's not just available, but that is us. With gratitude for this good, I speak this word of intention, of upliftment, of insight, of knowledge, of knowing, of belief for each one of us. And I let it loose into that same creative law that has always said yes, knowing once again it's saying yes. And so it is. So it is. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and, and that's a prayer to be able to do another prayer. Because from that awareness that we're not second-rate material, that we are not limited by any feelings of unworthiness that we have, we're opening ourselves up to even greater greatness. And this is all a process. It's all an unfoldment. If I get pushback on any of the steps, then that means that it's time to do a prayer about wherever the resistance is coming from. So I think the extra step that you were talking about is actually an extra prayer before you get into the prayer. You know, I like that word work. It's <laughs> some extra work you got to do, you know, to... But work is a good word to me, so you got to get in there and find out um, what what you believe, you know, Well, about yeah, God and there's, and the... there's, there's two ways that it comes up. We get to do our prayer work. Yes. And then we get to see our prayers work. Yes, yes. Yeah. We work them and they work. That's right. It'll work if you work it. Okay. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.